proof of fraud allegations from within the Bible. Christian belief, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 5, verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Here's the evidence against this claim. Exodus 33, verse 20. But he said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. John 5, 37. Jesus says, His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen. John 1, verse 18. No one has ever seen God. James 3, verse 8 to 9. But no human being can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who are made in the likeness of God. Hosea 11, verse 9. I am a God, not man. Numbers 23, 19. God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should repent. Timothy 1, 6, verse 16. He alone is immortal. He lives in the light that no one can approach. No one has ever seen him. No one can ever see him. To him be honour and eternal power. Amen. Genesis 19, verse 1. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed his face to the earth. Definitely, it was not God that appeared to him. Matthew 1, verse 20. But as he considered this, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Note, brothers and sisters, here it is the angel of the Lord that appeared to him and spoke to him. For we know God cannot be seen or heard. Matthew 1, 24. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Luke 1, 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Note here, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and spoke to her, and clearly not the Lord, bless his name forever. Luke 1, 28. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Luke 1, 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. Here, Blessed Mary is clearly talking about the Lord God who cannot be seen or heard. Luke 1, 30. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. It is clearly, and it was clearly, not the Lord that came to her, but Gabriel, the angel, conveying a message from the Lord. Exodus 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and he looked and behold the bush. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Notice here how the angel of the Lord appears in a flame of fire to Moses. So why have we been made to believe by our teachers and priests that God appeared to his prophets when clearly he did not? Genesis 22:15, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. Note to you, brothers and sisters, 
that it is the voice of the angel of the Lord calling out to Abraham from heaven and clearly not the voice of God. John 12, 28 to 30. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. So why, brothers and sisters, have we been made to believe by our priests and our teachers that God spoke to the prophets and to blessed Jesus, when clearly he did not? Exodus 14, 19 to 20. Then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind him. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and host of Israel. Clear as daylight, it was the angel of the Lord in a pillar of cloud that led the Israelites out of Egypt on that great day of salvation, brothers and sisters, and not God bless his name forever. Genesis 16, 7 to 11. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Haja, maid of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your descendants that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with a child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. Here, Clearly, the angel of the Lord is speaking to her and not God. So we have just heard, brothers and sisters, overwhelming evidence that no one can see God or hear his voice. For it is beyond reasonable doubt that it is the angels of the Lord that appear to the people, sometimes in a pier of cloud, sometimes in a flame of fire, other times as men, other times in dreams, and it is the angels that speak to these people, and clearly not the voice of the Lord God bless his name forever. Now my brothers and sisters, listen carefully to the lie of the scribes who intentionally pervert the word of the living God. Genesis 16, 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of sin. For she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? My dear brothers and sisters, the above twisted verse of Genesis 16:13 is the birthplace of the greatest lie which the corrupt scribe has inserted into our Bible. It is from this corrupt insertion that other lies are conceived as we progress in the video. This lie that Hajar saw the Lord and spoke with him, when clearly, as we have just read in verse 11, which reads, and the angel of the Lord said to her, spreads like a plague throughout the Bible, causing widespread contamination to the pollution that is already there. In fact, it penetrates all the way to the last page of Revelations in the New Testament. Check this out. Exodus 3, 4-5. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. Then he said, Do not come near. Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Notice, brothers and sisters, how the corrupt scribes refers to the angel as Lord and God giving the impression that God is a flame of fire and that he spoke with Moses. When in verse 2, it clearly reads, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. 
And again, in Exodus 13, 21, 22. And the Lord went before them by day as a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. That they may travel by day and night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Brothers and sisters, we already know too well from Exodus 14, 19, 20, that it is clearly the angel of the Lord and not the Lord that is in the pillar of a cloud. Now take a look at some of the pollution that the other scribes deliberately insert into the Bible with the mother of lies that God can be seen in the form of an angel and that his voice can be heard when in truth it should be written as the angel of the Lord. Check this out. Genesis 7, 1 Then the Lord said to Noah. Genesis 6, 13 And God said to Noah. Genesis 9, 8 Then God said to Noah. Genesis 9, 1 And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them. Genesis 17, 1 When Abraham was 96 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Genesis 17, 3 Then Abraham fell on his face and God said to him. Genesis 17, 22 Listen to this. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. And brothers and sisters, this begs the question, did God bless his name forever, decide to drop in for a cup of coffee? What an insult to our intelligence. Genesis 18, 2-3 He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold three men stood in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favour in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Genesis 18, 22 to 23. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed destroy the righteous from the wicked? Brothers and sisters, bear in mind in Exodus 33, 20, it clearly states, No one can see God and live. And here we have blessed Abraham standing next to God and having a discussion with him. Can you, my brothers and sisters, imagine God bless his name forever? Who no one can see and no one can hear, standing on earth on a sunny afternoon and having this conversation with Abraham. It is a circus. Genesis 18, 27. Abraham answered, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am dust and ashes. Genesis 18:33. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Genesis 19, 1. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed his face to the earth. It is clear from this, brothers and sisters, that it is the two angels that have just come from Abraham. And in truth, there was only two of them, for the corrupt scribes, have clearly been hard at work in the previous verses. Very amusing, anyway. At this point, we have to ask ourselves, what is the motive behind the scribes perverting the words of the living God? And the pollution continues. Luke 1, 45. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. We all know it was the angel Gabriel that spoke to Blessed Mary, and clearly not the Lord. Again, brothers and sisters, it is of utmost importance to know that the angels of the Lord not only appeared in human form, but also in balls of fire and pillars of cloud and spoke to the people and the prophets. 
It was the angels of the Lord that appeared in visions to the prophets, in order for the prophecies to be written. And clearly, not God bless his name forever. So now, having come to this truth, how can we possibly believe that we are made in God's image with damaging evidence like this? How can Blessed Mary be the mother of God when Jesus tells you from his own lips, no one has heard his voice or seen his form. And it was God that created Mary to be the mother of Jesus in the first place. Furthermore, how do we know God bless his name forever as a mother? When clearly he tells us in Hosea 11, 9, I am a God, not man. And in Numbers 23, 19, God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should repent. And having come to this conclusion, how can we have the audacity to call blessed Jesus God and the Son of God, when out of his own lips he clearly states God cannot be seen or heard? Having come to this truth, I want you to read Genesis 32, verses 22 to 32. This is the best lie in the Bible. It actually takes the cake. According to the corrupt scribe that wrote this, the chapter is apparently about God coming down to earth in the form of a man, bearing in mind, Blessed Jesus has just told us from his own lips that no man has ever seen God or heard his voice. And wrestling with Jacob all night, and guess what? Jacob wins. Check this out. Genesis 24 to 26. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and Jacob's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have provoked. Can you imagine the king of the universe who created the dawn and the night? He stretched out the heavens and earth and created everything that was in them, including Jacob, coming down from his mighty throne on his lunch break and deciding to have a wrestle with an ant like Jacob and wait for it, beg to be released for daybreak was coming. The very daybreak that he created. What an insult to our intelligence. Genesis 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. Clearly, this is another example of the false scribes at work doing what they do best, and that is lie. For we all know the truth from our Master Jesus. John 5, 37. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. And from Exodus 33, Verse 20, he said, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. So once again, brothers and sisters, I strongly stress, it is without any reasonable doubt, and it is beyond reasonable doubt, that it was the angel of the Lord that appeared sometimes in a flame of fire and spoke to the people as you have just clearly heard. And clearly not God, bless his name forever. For our great master and teacher has taught us so. So when you read throughout the Bible, verses such as, And the Lord said to Moses, And in Ezekiel the word of the Lord came to me, And the hand of the Lord was upon me, etc., etc. It is beyond reasonable doubt that this really interprets the angel of the Lord, and clearly not the Lord God. Knowing too well that the Lord God is the only true God and Saviour and that he cannot be seen or heard and that it was his angels that appeared to the people and spoke with them. Check this contamination out. Having seen example of the mother of lies, this great lie gives birth to another great lie in the New Testament. Listen to this. Luke 1.32 He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Luke 1, 
35. Therefore, the child to be born will be called the Holy Son of God. This is the angel of the law speaking in Luke 2, 11. Listen to this. For you, for to you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. This, brothers and sisters, is the birthplace of another great lie in the New Testament. This corrupt scribe is brainwashing us into believing on this day a Saviour and Lord is born. What on earth happened to the Lord and Saviour of the Old Testament? Can anyone tell me if he was born? And who his parents were? For this is impossible, as we have come to know the truth from the lips of blessed Jesus himself in John 5.37. No one has heard his voice, no one has seen his form. Whatever happened to the Lord and Saviour of Enoch, Noah, Moses, Elijah, David, Daniel and the others, did he retire or die? Why does he have to be born and come to earth when according to the corrupt scribes, the Lord has already come to earth? And according to the scribes, more than one Lord have already come down to earth. Remember, brothers and sisters, back on that sunny afternoon in Genesis 18, 22, 23. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed destroy the righteous from the wicked? And in Genesis 18, 27, Abraham answered, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. I who am dust and ashes. Mind you, here in Genesis 18, 2-3, we have three lords. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent to meet them, and bowed himself to earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favour in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves until under a tree while I fetch a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on. And what about in Genesis 19, verse 1 to 2? The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in his gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and bowed himself with his face to the earth, and said, My Lord. Now we have two lords. They've gone from two angels to two lords. Turn aside, I pray you to your servant's house. You notice here, brothers and sisters, how it's gone from two angels to two lords. And what about back in Genesis 17, 22? When Abraham, when he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. So why do we need a saviour in Christ and Lord to be born when clearly, according to the corrupt scribes, our Lord and sometimes lords, more than one, have been dropping in on a regular basis and having meals and chats back then with our men Abraham and Lot. Clearly our brains have been ironed by a very hot iron, brothers and sisters. So now the corrupt scribes have swapped from making the angels of the Lord, who are created, Lord, into making blessed Jesus, who is also created, and is the son of David, into Saviour and Lord. In addition, there is a clear state of confusion here. For in the last half of the verse in Luke 1.35, it clearly states, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Now, I cannot tell what type of drugs these scribes were inhaling, but I do know that they sure were in a heavy cocktail. For it is clear as daylight, that they did not know Arthur from Martha, but more so, rather that they did, but clearly did not want any true believers to know. Once again, this begs the question, why have our priests, which we have trusted with our lives, and our religious teachers taught our great-grandparents, our grandparents, our parents, and now us these false doctrines, knowing too well they are lies. So in Luke 1.35, they tell us he is to be called the Son of God. And straight after that, in Luke 2.11, they tell us he is a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. So if we put the two together, we get 
Today for you is born the Son of God. He is a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. Makes very clear sense. So here, my brothers and sisters, we have to take into serious account that this Bible was written around 350 years after Blessed Jesus and the Apostles, as I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation. Bearing in mind that the Trinity which was formed as with reference to the forgers of the word in 1983, Victor Paul Wheeling, and I repeat, the truth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was deliberately forged into the doctrine of God the Son. Seeds of Jesus Christ were planted and sprouted during the lifetime of Paul, continued growing during Timothy's lifetime and flourished shortly thereafter, reaching full bloom for all future creeds in 325 AD. The doctrine that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was God the Son, was decreed by the worldly and ecclesiastical powers. Men were forced to accept it at the point of the sword, or else, thus the error of the Trinity was propounded to the end and that ultimately, Poor people believed it to be the truth. And this truth continues till this very second that I'm talking to you. And the pollution continues, my brothers and sisters. Matthew 16, 17. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting on him. And behold, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. By now, brothers and sisters, we know only too well that it is the angel of the Lord that descended in the form of a dove, and clearly not the Spirit of God. For no one has ever seen God or heard his voice. Note how the corrupt scribe inscribes my son when we know Jesus is created, just like the angels are also created, and everything else for that matter. Matthew 16 Verses 15 to 20. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, <clears throat> for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. We go to Luke 9, 20 to 22, in the same text, my brothers and sisters. Listen to this. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, the Christ of God. But he charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. We go to Mark 8, 29 to 31. The same text again, brothers and sisters. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Notice, brothers and sisters, Luke and Mark have totally different texts to Matthew. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the close of age.
we go to Mark 16, verse 15, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. We go to Luke 24, 47 to 48. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power on high. You go to the Acts 1, verse 4 to 5, we have, And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he sent, you heard from me. For John baptised with water, but before many days he shall be baptised by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Note, brothers and sisters here, in Mark, Luke, and the Acts are totally different to Matthew. Luke 3, 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form as a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, with I am pleased. Here we well know that the Holy Spirit is the angel of the Lord that appeared in the form of a dove, and we clearly know it is not the voice of God, and clearly the blessed Jesus is not the Son of God. Check this out, brothers and sisters. John 1, 45. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. John 1, 49. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. First he is a teacher, then son of God, then king of Israel. Is this multiple choice answer or is Nathanael just blind? What an insult to our intelligence. Matthew 15, 22. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. Notice how the corrupt scribes have no respect for God, making out Jesus is Lord and that he is the son of David, revealing to us the evil minds that God is the son of a human. What about John 20, 28? Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Whatever happened to Son of God? Acts 15, 11. But we believe that we shall be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they were. Corinthians 16, 23. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Ephesians 6, 23. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, brothers and sisters, we have two gods, not one. God the Father and God the Lord Jesus. It really begs the question. Colossians 1.15 He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. How can blessed Jesus be the image of the invisible God when from his own lips in John 5.37, again, he tells us, His voice you have never heard including Jesus, that is, and his form you have never seen, including blessed Jesus. For if God, blessed his name forever, wanted to show himself, he would have appeared to blessed Moses on the mountain of God, where in Exodus 33, verse 20, through the voice of the angel, God states, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And secondly, how can blessed Jesus be firstborn of all creation when he's clearly created and is the son of David, the descendant of Abraham. In all seriousness, my brothers and sisters, this proves beyond reasonable doubt that the scribes and false teachers, along with their father the devil, had a clear intent to pollute the Holy Bible in order to make the faithful lose their way and to worship the Creator and not the Creator, hence ensuring that all the followers of Christ be damned come Judgment Day, thus provoking God's wrath as in Isaiah 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look on the dead bodies of the men that have rebelled against me. 
for their worms shall not die, their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be an impurance to all flesh. Exodus 20 verse 3 God clearly states, You shall have no other gods before me. In verse 4, You shall not make for yourselves a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Clearly, Almighty, never living God, is not happy when we worship statues and humans. This includes Blessed Mary and Blessed Jesus and any human created. For it is God that created them so that they may teach us to worship Him, not for us to worship them. In reality, brothers and sisters, we are worshipping the created, not the Creator. We are worshipping the created and not the Creator. See Romans 1 verses 18 to 32. Note 25, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. In Jeremiah 7.21, God clearly tells us, because we worship the creator, all our incense and prayers over all this time is not accepted. In fact, he tells the prophet Jeremiah in 7.16, as for you, do not pray for this people, or lift up a cry or prayer for them, and do not intercede with me, for I do not hear you. In Romans 1, 31, notice 26 and 27 and 32, God's wrath is on them for worshipping the Creator, not the Creator. This is evident throughout the Bible ever since the great lie of the scribe back in Genesis 16:13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of sin. For she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? That concludes the fourth of this 10 part video series. In our next video, entitled Blessed Jesus is Created to be God's Chosen Servant, Prophet, and Messenger, we will present to you overwhelming evidence provided to us from Jesus Himself and from God, who by now we well know cannot be seen or heard, and that He communicates to us through His angels, not to mention various other characters in the Bible, that lead us to the clear understanding that Jesus was not God or the Son of God, but was most certainly created to be God's servant, prophet, and messenger.